Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. This is Isaiah Unland, your host for the Unland podcast, along with his wife, Jade. Yes, my wife, Jade. On today's episode, we will be talking about Jade's testimony. Yep. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so I was born in 1997 to my parents, Kelly and Amber. They, I am a honeymoon baby. They are. So they did not plan for me right away, but it's God's plan. So, um, uh, yeah, I grew up in a Christian household. With my mom being like the spiritual leader, um, and so, um, yeah. Sorry, Oakley just farted and I'm really distracted by that. Okay, so, I was born and raised in New Mexico. I was born in Las Cruces. My parents were still in college at New Mexico State. Go Aggies, that's where I went. Um, and... Yeah, and so, um, grew up in Las, or I was born in Las Cruces, and then my dad went to music school in Minnesota for like Minnesota, a eh? Years, or four years, we were there in Minnesota, and so that's where my sister Ruby was born, and then my mom didn't want to be away from her family, which is here in Albuquerque, and so. Um, we all moved back when I was four years old and I was homeschooled and, um, like my only social interactions besides my family was church. Um, and I grew up in a Baptist church. Um, and it's actually the same church that I, we are going to now as I became a member of, so that's fun. Um, but since I was homeschooled, everyone else was in, like, the youth group and, like, all of the children's programs, whatever, they always went to public school. And so I just, like, did not have solid friendships. Um, there were, like, a couple of girls that I hung out with that went to, like, a private school, um, and stuff, but just wasn't like really solid and so um in middle school I went to like a half homeschool half um public school kind of thing and so got some more like interactions there um oh I just like skipped the whole chunk main part of my testimony the whole chunk (laughs) when I when I was homeschooled I had to have been like between eight and ten and usually when people like share their testimony, they remember the exact moment that they accepted Jesus. And I just, I just didn't. I like, I know where I was like sitting in my room and my homeschool thing, it was like a DVD thing. And so it was, um, the first thing every single morning was a Bible like study class. And at the end of each of those videos, she says like, the sinner's prayer or whatever that's called. Is that what it's called? Like, if you want to become a believer and then you, like, accept Jesus and, like, like the ABCs kind of thing. So I prayed that um, because a lot of my friends at church at the time were, like, getting baptized. And you go up in front of the church and everyone sees you walk up there and everyone claps and everyone sees you, like, be baptized. And so... Like, I knew the significance of, like, accepting Jesus into my life, but I did it for the wrong reason at that time. And I was, like, pretty young, so whatever. I was, like, baptized when I was, like, 11 or 12 with my sister Ruby. And so, yeah. But my it's not like my life really changed. Um, I, like, still went to church and stuff. And I never did anything bad, like, growing up like either like 
like didn't go to parties in high school, didn't drink, didn't do drugs. Like I literally had no desire to do that. I always wanted to do the right thing. <clears throat> but it wasn't for like the Lord, it was just for other people. Um, so um, in high school I went to like a, a charter school and met like some of my closest like friends I still talk to today. Um, and that's when I started to get into photography. My mom had studied photography in college, so I was always around a camera, but in high school is when I really took it seriously and that's what I knew I was going to go into in college. I would like take pictures of my friends and um, yeah, it was just like the stereotypical like, hey, let's let's hang out after school and take some like cool photos and then like you look back and like it's still on my Facebook and it's embarrassing and so bad, but that's where I... It was always bad, like, the filters. Because I would do it, too, yeah, and I would but... put, like, bad filters on it. Like... Well, it was just also, like, my poses, because I thought I was so cool. And I would post it on the Facebook, and I, would, I was like, wow, I'm going to get, like, 15 likes on this. Everyone's going to comment on it, and it's just going to be so cool. And whatever. At the time, people thought it was cool, but... Okay, anyway. Um... Yeah, and so in high school, like I said, I didn't really have a lot of like close friends in the youth group. And so towards the end of high school, I remember just not even going to youth group. And my mom was kind of like worried about me because like there's always that thing that people say like when your kids go into college, you just won't like attend church and they'll just like kind of fall away from their faith. I knew that wasn't going to happen to me, so I wasn't, I wasn't worried, but my mom was kind of worried. Um... And so I went to New Mexico State and I studied um, photography. And my first year of college was rough. I had this um, roommate that was assigned to me, and she was like a great roommate for the time, but we just like, like we weren't super close. Um, and she just like she was struggling with a lot of things, and it just didn't help my state of anything. But I went to the Christian Challenge, aka the BSU or Baptist Student Union, whatever you want to call it, um, and I started getting discipled and started um, getting plugged in there, um, and that was really where my faith grew and I made it my own. It was like the first time that I had ever heard about discipling and having other people, like girls older then you like pour into um, believers younger and that was just really intentional and that was that was really life changing for me um, just like having someone take the time out of their week and their day to just spend with you and to just like ask how you're doing and learn more about you and to just really pour into that season of life that you're in just made a lot of sense because like I would do that with my friends in high school but it was just like I would I just consider that hanging out, but low-key, I was kind of like discipling my friends, but um, I just like really love discipling, and I'm just really grateful for that, um, and so then after my first, oh, in my freshman year of college, I met this boy, and um, he was like, <laughs> I did not date anyone my entire life until my freshman year of college. Because I had this dream that the first boy I would date would be my husband. That is not realistic. I mean, it can be, but guys, it's just not. Um, so, yeah, I we met, I met this boy at church the summer before I went to um, college. And I, it was just a like, weird situation, but... He was visiting his grandma, and his grandma went to my church. So that's how we met. And then he went to school in California. And so we, like, talked all up until Thanksgiving when he came back to visit his grandma for, like, Thanksgiving break. So that's when, like, we actually, like, met, met, and hung out. And that's when, like, we officially started dating. Um, it was both of our first relationships, and... Um, we just had no idea what we were doing, and yeah, so just remember that. So I, um, 
end my freshman year of college, my boyfriend goes and works at a summer camp, which is Glorietta. And I had grown up going to Glorietta for like some summer camps, but he was there working there. And so I was like, oh, I didn't even know that was an option to do because it got bought out by this like bigger camp. And so you could work there for summer staff. Um, and so I, that's when I first heard that I could work at Glorietta. I did not that summer, but um, yeah, that's how, that's how I was introduced to Glorietta, which is nice because that's that was the only good thing that came out of that relationship <laughs> so i um moved into a house my second year of college with these girls from the christian challenge and they were just like at the time i wasn't like super close with any of them but now they're like my closest friends and they're just like so amazing but I was so focused on my long distance relationship with this guy that I I was still like involved in the Christian challenge. I was still going to my classes, like all that stuff, but my my time outside of that stuff was just like spent FaceTiming and talking with him and just like really being like, I don't know, I was just like, it was just so draining and I didn't know it at the time, but um, he was cheating on me. He was cheating on me like emotionally, um, physically, and there were like a couple instances that I knew about, but I just, um, I was like, no, it's fine. This is our first relationship. I kept get, like forgiving him, giving him grace. And I just like, no one, none of my roommates knew my mom didn't know like I was just very ashamed because I was like if anyone finds out that I'm dating a guy who's cheating on me like that's that's shameful on my part like yeah that's bad that he's like he's doing that but it's even worse that I'm still with him so I was just like that was like a part of my life that I didn't like not want to share with anyone and so then I went out for um I went out to California during my spring break my second year of college and we just like he he seriously pushed all of my physical boundaries that I put up. I am very like I knew that, like I don't know I just didn't like kiss anyone, and when he ki like kissed me, it was just like a full on makeout session all the time, and so I lost a lot of innocence. Like we didn't have like sex, but. It was just not good, like, it was just so bad. And so, um, after spring break, things were just, like, really rocky between us, and I don't really know what really happened, um, to make, th make things feel like they were falling apart before, like, something actually happened, but I got a message from this girl on Instagram, and she was like, hey, like, your boyfriend like keeps messaging me and my friend that he wants to like hook up with us <clears throat> and I was like what the heck like are you serious and this is like towards the end of um, my second year and we had planned to work at Glorietta again together and that was the longest we were gonna be together in like our entire relationship so we were like really looking forward to it and so I like called him out on it and I was like I do not deserve to be in a relationship like this. Can you like th the fact that this girl cared enough about me took the time out of her day to tell me that you are doing this to me. Like I'm this I'm ending this relationship. This is dumb. And so in that relationship still went out to Glorietta um, and I worked there and it was amazing. I was on there. Uh, media staff and so I went around to all of the like different programs at Glorietta and took all the photos like interviewed kids and it was just it was amazing and that's really where I fell in love with camp ministry and just I knew that I wanted to be in ministry after that summer and so then I went back to college and um my ex actually still went to Glorietta that summer, and I like had, did not want anything to do with him. 
Um, but it was kind of like friends with benefits. Like he was just like really manipulative and like leading me on. But we weren't in a relationship. But we like still talked every day. And so I was just really confused and my heart was really torn. I was like, I don't know what's going on. Um, so went back to college after that summer. And it was my last year of college. I like finished a whole year early, so I didn't, I'm not skipping a year. Um, but, um, yeah, I just like tried to pour in a whole lot more, um, into my college ministry, Christian Challenge, and I was discipling a bunch of girls, and I was doing campus evangelism and all that stuff. I was like hardcore involved in that, but I was still like talking to this boy for no good reason at all. Um, and so, I don't even know. I like, I truly do not remember the moment. I was just like, I'm done, like, sorry, bye. I just like cut off all communication. I blocked him um, on everything blocked his number and he was like super confused because I didn't give her a reason I was just like I don't this just needs to stop I don't even know what this is um and so then I graduated I moved out of my house said bye to all my friends really sad but then I went to um Glorietta again for my second summer and I was on media stuff again um and my ex showed up again for a random weekend that he because he knew I was there and he wanted to talk to me and I was like that was like really what I needed for just closure because we were both just like okay like I I was like I'm sorry that I blocked you but I just needed space like I forgive you for everything that you like did wrong but I don't think that we need to be friends and so then like literally the next day I met this other guy <clears throat> And I went on this date with this other guy. This is not Isaiah, okay? I've had a total of three boyfriends, and the third one was it, and that's Isaiah. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, <laughs> what the? Why did you say it like that? Okay, whatever. So, I met this other guy. Um, and he was just, like, different. He, like, was really intentional with me. Like, took the time out of his day to, like, be with me. And, um... So then, like, we started dating towards the end of that summer, um, and I had, I had moved back home from college because I had no idea what I was going to do. I was, like, shooting weddings and all that stuff, but I didn't have, like, a stable job. I was just, like, at home, and it was just, it's always hard when you move back home after you've had, like, your own life, and you come back, and your mom still like wants you to tell you where you're going and I'm like no so it was just it was just a kind of hard like season mentally I was like I don't even know what kind of state like stage of life that I'm in I just knew it was a transition phase I just didn't know like what the heck um and so I'm like dating this guy and he worked at Glorietta um full time and so I still got to go to Glorietta um and that's like I mean my love for Glorietta just continued to grow um, and so, pretty early on in our relationship, I was, like, really confident that we were going to get married, and, because we had talked about it, and his family was amazing, and it just, like, felt like everything was falling into place, um, but then I got this, like, I got this office job, and there's nothing wrong with the office job, it just was my first office job, and it was just, uh, a different and like really hard challenging environment for me to be in <clears throat> and I just didn't want to um, be in it anymore and I only worked there for like a month so I didn't really give it a chance I take full responsibility for that but I just really felt called not to be there anymore so I quit and I wasn't there and the guy that I was with was really mad because I was making a lot of money and he, I think he just, like, the idea that he had of me was just, like, gone. I, like, was not a hard worker. I, I don't know. It was, it was just hard. And so then from that point on, like, things were just kind of falling apart. 
and I thought the only way that things could get better is that if I moved up to Florida and I worked there so we could spend more time together. So I get a job like in the off season. I did like some painting job with my friend Emmy, who is amazing and fun. Um, and so like we were there together and we like definitely hung out a lot more. But I don't know, just like something just changed like in his brain and he was just like, hey, it was just like random like one day and this is like the beginning of summer and I was going to be summer staff, not on media, but I was going to be a, like a counselor and I was going to like lead youth groups and Bible study and activities and all that stuff, which is completely different for me. And so um, he was just like, um, so let's just spend a week thinking about our relationship and if we should be together. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, fairly, I do not recommend this. Do not do this. But fairly early on in our relationship, I bought a wedding dress. I don't know why, guys. I do not know why. I had, like, the money for it, and I was like, I found it. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to get it. Um, so that's how I saved money on my wedding dress for my actual <laughs> wedding with Isaiah. Um, because I bought it like a year and a half early, whatever. Um, so I, I was just like so heartbroken and so shocked because I, I really thought that we were going to get married because the week before he had a conversation with me, he was like, oh yeah, so let's start making plans, like future plans, saving money for when we're going to get married. And I was like, okay, that's like, I'm in that same headspace too. And then the next week, he's literally like, we are not going to be together anymore. So that was really, really hard. And so I, but after like, so we broke up, whatever. And it was like at that point that I just like realized, and he thought I would, would have realized it sooner, but I just made relationships an idol. Like my, like my entire life, like I was just like putting this one person on a pedestal um and they were just gonna fix everything and that like marriage is gonna fix my life situation marriage is going to like help 